How we going, guys? Welcome to the first edition of the Patriot Campers virtual show, Patriot Live. I'm Justin Monisalvo, uh, founder and CEO of Patriot Campers. And I'm Tommy Mills, National Sales Manager for Patriot Campers. So today we're going we're gonna to introduce to you a model that I suppose we've reignited uh, very recently, which is the Patriot Campers X1N. And what the X1N is fundamentally it's taken it right back to where Patriot Campers originally started. Fundamentally, it's a trailer that has what we think is everything that most families would need, or couples or single people uh, for touring, but now gives you the flexibility to put on whatever style of accommodation that you like um, on top of this um, camper trailer. And I think the trailer was so good that someone ended up buying one. I did, yeah. So for me, uh, the X1N suited everything that I wanted um, and I ended up buying one. Um, you know, I didn't really go with the tent, I went with swags um, because I do so many different styles of camping. So for me, it was absolutely perfect and I love it. So it's worth stating, so for you, your situation, you've got two young kids. That's it. Yep, and swags and tents. Swags, and that's, that's your bikes. Style. Like when I go camping, like the kids want bikes, they want kayaks, they want everything. So, you know, wanting to keep everything out the car, keeping the weight off the car, keep it all on the trailer. That way when I want to go, it's all there and all I've got to do is hitch up. And every trip, look, every trip and, and every trip is slightly different, but obviously throughout the years your family evolves and the trailer can evolve with you. So let's say for example that you've got a specific trip in mind, uh, you're going mountain biking even for the day or for a weekend, which I do with my boys a fair bit. You can put three or four mountain bikes up on top of the XO rack system. If you're uh, going on a, a specific trip that you might want swags or another trip you might want a full rooftop tent if you're taking the wife and you know additional family and all the rest of it, it is that versatile mm. that you can utilise it for really any sort of uh, situation. Now the other big advantage uh, behind the versatility and something that we've picked up um, throughout the years here at Patriot Camp is a lot of tradies are buying camper trailers and really the analogy goes something like this, it's like people who buy dual cab utes. Yeah. Isn't it? So yeah. most tradies own a dual cab yet, and why is that? Why do they have a dual cab? Well, obviously during the week, Monday to Friday, you're earning your income. Um, and you can see some photos coming up on the screen there now. You can see in a, in a photo shoot for this particular instance, you can see ladders up on top. You're earning your income, but then on the weekend, you can turn this trailer into the weekend warrior for those weekend sort of trips. You've got all your charging station inside. You've got tons of room um, for storage of tools. You can see in this image that's just come up, um, cooking, like, I mean, how many tradies do you see with gas stoves <coughs> and even microwaves with inverters yeah. and, and all that sort of yeah. stuff? You've got the kitchen there. Um, I think we've got another couple of images uh, coming up there as well that are going to show a little bit more of that versatility. Um, you know, wheelbarrow, first thing that comes to mind is concrete. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So there's a million different trades, but the big advantage that's going on right now is the big tax in incentive scheme by the federal government, the $150,000 instant write-off. If you're genuinely using uh, your trailer uh, for your trade and it's a tool of trade, well, then you're eligible for that tax incentive as well. So it's a perfect time to be buying a product like this and that also applies um, to our Super Tour customers as well. Let's have a quick chat about price point. I think, and, that, and that's really what got me. You know, mm. 39990 Australian yeah. and I think it's 30990 US. US. Yep. Um, I mean, you've got so many great features um, on that, you can pretty much get one straight away and just go camping um, without adding anything to it. And look, for the Patriot Campers lineup, um, that is, I suppose, what we would consider our entry level trailer, for lack of a better word, because there's nothing entry level about anything Patriot <laughs> Campers. Um, you know, the quality that Patriot Campers is renowned for, the, the techniques that we use in manufacturing, everything state of the art, the materials that we use. Um, and we just, there is no substitute for quality anywhere inside this premises no. here at Patriot Campers. So 39990, we think it represents amazing value for what you get. There is no options that are necessary in any Patriot Campers model. The options that we do are specific options, Absolutely. are they not? Yeah. You're not yeah. paying for water tanks, you're not paying for pumps, you're not paying for hot water, you're not paying for electrical systems or LEDs or you know, any of that sort of stuff. It all comes standard with a Patriot Camper. Um, and at that, that price, like I said, excellent value if you're in the United States with the way the US dollar is, especially at the moment, at oh. 30 grand in the US, um, it, there's a lot of trailer there. Now let's talk about how we're gonna run this through tonight. Yep. So currently we're, I'm sitting in the studio with Tom. Tom's gonna to go into the showroom um, and we're gonna give a live demonstration 
on the Patriot X1N that you can see that's uh, been popping up on, on that uh, other screen. Graphite X1N. This one, the only options that you will see in this trailer tonight that have been fitted, actually there's three options, which is the Dometic fridge, the 55 litre fridge. Uh, yep, so Dometic fridge, you've got the barbecue swingway, you've got the utility shelf, uh, and you've got barbecue and an extra gas bottle holder. And that's it. And that's it. So everything else that you see in there is standard features in the Patriot Campus X1N. I think where we'll kick off is um, we'll run into the chassis. Yeah. We'll have a look through the chassis. So Tom, mate, good luck. Okay. I'll talk to you from the showroom. All right, I'll see you in a bit. See you over there, mate. Now, the chassis, while Tommy gets, makes his way over there, the chassis on uh, the whole X range of trailers is fundamentally exactly the same. And the design has, it, look, it's been tweaked a lot since the original design of the X1, but it hasn't changed a lot. And I'll tell you the reason for that. In the years of manufacturing that Patriot Campus has gone through, we have not had one structural failure on a chassis ever. It has never happened uh, in the time so far to date, and there is thousands of X1s out there on the road now. So it's a rigid light chassis, uh, it's a patented uh, design. It's changed in the way of we've improved it over the years to, um, to make it a, a, a better engineered piece of gear, but towability. So we focus pretty heavily uh, on the low centre of gravity, but so I don't really take over everything that Tommy's about to show you, I might jump back in a little bit later on. Uh, Tommy, you got me. Yes, Justin, got you, mate. There you go, mate. I can see you. Over to you, mate. Give everyone a run through um, the Ridgelite chassis and all the components that make the Patriot as unstoppable as it is. Okay, thanks, Justin. Look, we'll start at the very front. Um, we'll start at the DO35 hitch uh, from Cruise Master. Um, look, it's the best hitch in the market. Um, maximum articulation. It spins all the way around, um, <clears throat> up and down. All those articulations. <clears throat> Press the red button in. To unlock, press it down to lock it on. Uh, I don't think there's an easier hitch on the market. Um, and they're just tried and tested um, and they suit this, uh, the unstoppable trailer um, as they are. You've got your, um, your uh, safety chains on the front. You've got a Anson plug for charging. <clears throat> and you've got a seven pin flat, but we can spe you can specify that as per your trailer um, when you take delivery. Um, <clears throat> handbrake on the front and you've got your jockey wheel here. Now with the jockey wheel, unlike others, they, um, we actually remove it totally and we put it on the drawbar here. And the reason why we do that is so that it doesn't fail, it doesn't swing down, it doesn't get caught uh, when full driving. So that's the reason why we do that. <clears throat> now you'll see with the front here, the, um, the, the drawbar here. <clears throat> so you can actually get an extended drawbar. So, if you have a tray back ute or a vehicle with a large rear door, um, you can option for that um, in there. But also, if you do change your vehicle when you're owning the trailer, um, that you can change that as well. So you can bring it to your local service department, they'll be able to change that for you. But let's talk about the construction uh, of the chassis a little bit more. As you can see, it's very robust, um, and they are, the reason because of that is because it's an interlocked, welded, hot dip galvanised chassis, okay? So we're keeping all that structural integrity of the trailer. But what we've done, and if you come down here underneath, you'll see the main structural part of the chassis, uh, obviously is steel, but the aluminium outriggers are there to give it a lightweight component. It's gonna still keep its structural integrity, um, but still be lightweight as well. You know, so with a tear of 975 kilos dry, um, with 120 kilos on the, on the ball, I think it's, it's one of the best in the market. You've got, um, as well, we'll come around the back because what it's done, we've teamed up with Cruise Master uh, and they've, we've developed together um, the suspension system called an X-Cruise suspension. So Tom, we, you got me there, mate? Yes, Justin, yep. Mate, I might, might actually jump in there and just, just give a little bit of a, a technical uh, insight into that interlocking in the chassis because that's a question that comes up a fair bit when we're at trade shows and all the rest of it. Okay, sounds good. So the interlocked uh, chassis, what that actually means is everything that here that we produce, we laser cut every piece of steel, metal, aluminium, stainless steel that comes in and out of this factory. So we can cut with a precision of plus or minus 0.1 of a millimetre. Now what we actually do with all that tube, if we can get that camera, Tommy, if you can get the camera back underneath the, uh, underneath the chassis there, 
You can see in that yoke of the, of the draw bar there and everywhere that we uh, actually join two pieces of tube together, effectively what we do is we notch and tab or a carpenter might kind of look at it like a finger joint. So into one piece of tube, we'll cut a slot. In the other piece of tube, we'll cut a tab. We'll interlock them into each other before we weld that chassis together. Now, that helps out with the precision of the jigging that uh, we know the tolerances are right so we can get the chassis Absolutely every one of them is identical and perfect. Um, but what it means is um, you're getting some structure there into the tube before we even put the weld on. Now, when we blast that weld uh, all the way around that joint, effectively what happens is you, when you're welding, it stresses the material, heats the material up, um, and you, you can get some warping in the material. But when we hot dip galvanise, and we hot dip galvanise at 450 degrees, what that helps do is alleviate a lot of that stress that's going into the material. It anneals all of that weld and it makes for a much, much uh, stronger joint. And it's a, it's a very common structural steel uh, style of technique. Um, but these are the things in, with a Patriot camper that you, that you don't know or you don't see. You know, it's not some guy out the back with a drop saw, you know, cutting pieces of 50 by 50 and, and stick welding them together. So, you know, there's, there's all of these techniques that we utilise from years and years of testing and prior background from all of the engineers here at Patriot Patriot campers and, and my background in steel work and fundamentally that's what makes up the interlocking. The other thing that I'll quickly touch on there, so the tear, uh, tear weight of the X1N, 975 kilos, um, but you've actually rated for 1600 kilos and that suspension Tommy's about to get to, which gives you a massive payload of over 600 kilos or if you're watching from the United States, um, about 1200 odd pounds. So back to you Tom. Well, I hope everyone was paying attention because we are doing a quiz after this uh, <laughs> on that. Um, but uh, thanks very much, Justin. That was fantastic, uh, really good information. We'll go back down underneath and we'll talk about that uh, X-Cruise suspension um, that we worked with Cruise Master on. Now, on the X1N, it's a standard airbag suspension, okay? And we use a roll sleeve on this. Now, they are very, very durable, um, extremely um, great for this sort of... Uh, camper tray where you're going full driving, so you're not going to you know, be hindered by sticks and things like that. Um, they've got a dual shock system on each uh, suspension arm, uh, and that's going to help with the, the ride um, when you're doing full driving, corrugated roads, and you're just generally touring. It's going to travel behind your car perfectly, um, and that um, is, is probably the best part of the trailer. You know, when you are doing those long touring trips, everything inside your camper is going to stay nice and secure. It's not going to be bounced around. Um, it's, we've, you know, we've tested this, uh, Cruise Master tested it um, you know, so much uh, on their rat runs that they, you know, they made it exactly right, spot on uh, for that 1600 kilo uh, GVM. Um, so also what we'll have a look here is on the suspension we get a 10 inch electric drum brake. So that's going to help um, with your, with your um, braking of the car, you know, it's going to save those brakes. And then attached to that is when we'll come around here is your 16 inch alloy wheel um, by Pico and the 33 inch mud terrain tire. So I think uh, that's what we've got there um, at this moment for the, uh, for the chassis. Got me mate? Yes, Justin? Tom, you've, you've learnt some stuff. I'm actually, I'm really, really impressed. A <laughs> couple of things that may have been missed there in the back. We've got rated recovery uh, points in the back that are welded uh, into the main chassis stringers, uh, which fundamentally put all the load back onto the drawbar. And I'll quickly touch on uh, the stud patterns that are available. So standard on that P-Core wheel, you'll get a six stud pattern, which will fit most of your Japanese sort of touring vehicles and dual cab utes. But we also offer a five on 150 Land Cruiser uh, pattern. And for the Jeep fans, especially in the United States, a five on 127 pattern is available um, also for a Jeep. 33 inch mud terrain tires are standard. Uh, Federal's come in standard on all Patriot campers, but we also offer an upgrade to a Mickey Thompson. So that probably just about wraps, uh, wraps up the chassis. What we might actually uh, get into now, uh, Tommy, you still there, mate? You got me? Yes, Justin, I got you. Awesome, um, this, this is working quite well. Um, let's, um, let's go into the storage. In the X1N, um, you've got about 2,000 litres of storage and I think with the design, uh, the design that we've put into this trailer and all the Patriot uh, models, every time we come back from a trip, we make utilisation of space 
more and more comfortable um, for so many more people. There's so many hidden little places um, inside a Patriot camper and uh, the X1N specifically that Tommy's going to show you through now that have been purposely built um, and designed to store all of the gear that you might need on your camping trip. Let's head over to Tommy and let's have a, um, let's have a walk around the storage of the X1N. Thanks, Justin. Okay, yeah, I mean, look, uh, the main reason most people will buy a camper trailer is because they're looking to get the gear out of their car, um, stop playing Tetris whenever they want to go, um, and keep it in the trailer. So it stays in there all the time, so when they want to go, they just hitch on and take off. So we'll run you through the storage. We'll start off at the front gullwing box here, and this is what we call the man cave. Um, or you can look at it as being the garage of the camper trailer because for me, anything that I have in my garage would typically go into my, uh, this part of the camper trailer. So we'll have a look here and we'll start off um, there. You've got the optional utility shelf there, which I think is quite an important part, you know, giving you that up high um, storage. You're looking at straps, hoses, floor mats, um, all that sort of stuff that you might put in there. Um, come standard with a bottle jack for your suspension um, and a fire extinguisher with an LED light strip just at the top there so you give fuel, full visibility uh, inside what you've got there. Now this one's been optioned with the barbecue swing away and baby Weber Q. Um, really, really great piece of kit. And if you're into your cooking, this is, this is probably the main feature. We'll just pull that out of the way though, because we will talk about that a little bit later on. Um, you can then see if you don't go for the barbecue swing away, have a look at the storage there. Now in there you could get six 20 litre jerry cans if you don't get the barbecue swing away, or you can get two 20 litre jerry cans next to the barbecue if you do option it. Now they can be water, or fuel because it is aerated, okay? Um, but pretty much you can put anything in there. I've got the kids um, hiking boots in there and that's what I do. Um, you've got the rubber seal and these are on all of the doors, okay? That's gonna stop all the dust and all the water getting into your camper trailer. So it's very important these are nice and clean um, and, and not, uh, not broken. Now, <clears throat> I could talk about this area but I'm gonna talk about this being the kitchen a little bit later on. So we'll come to the back uh, and we'll talk about the wet storage boxes either side. <clears throat> okay, so these storage boxes are huge and they're so handy. I don't think everyone who owns an X1 would find these one of the most handy parts of the trailer. They're huge. If you hop inside there, there's so much space. Now that's floor mats, recovery gear, muddy boots, anything you like. Now mine's actually full of uh, beach toys and bucks and spades, sandy stuff, okay? So that's what's in mine. Um, and the other side as well, um, there's more storage too. And they're lockable, so you can put things like fishing bait, things that you don't want people to, to take as well. Oh, missing the, probably the, the biggest part of the trailer is this rear storage. If you drop that down, um, not only does that door make for a great picnic table, but have a look at the storage in there. Now you can get so much gear in there, there's eight tables, uh, sorry, eight chairs, probably two tables in there, you can fill it right up. Your big bulky items um, will all go in there, okay? So kids' stretchers and things like that. You've got another little storage compartment on the side there, great for pegs. And of course, the large rear storage with your movable separators, okay? So they can be moved to suit whatever you've got inside this section here, and that's on both sides. That's great, so handy um, for all your pantry needs. If we come round here, <clears throat> you can open this up, and this is your main storage compartment for clothes, or well, this is what we use it for, clothes. So you can get these uh, boxes that have been specifically made for uh, Patriot campers um, from Patriot Supply, and you can get a maximum of, of four inside this compartment, and um, You've also got your inverter there and a charging shelf. Now that's great for your toiletries, okay? So I find this area just, you know, where you're using your clothes, toiletries, and that sort of stuff. And a great workbench so you can grab your bag, grab what you need, and then just put it back so you don't have all bags all over the campsite. Tommy, you got me there, mate? Yes, Justin, I got you. Okay, well, you know what's gonna happen if the big boss doesn't get a plug here on the Patriot Supply stuff, huh? Yes. Mate. All right, so let's, let me just quickly run through these storage boxes. If we can get a shot of those storage boxes up nice and tight, guys. So the Patriot storage boxes, these are a brainchild of Sarah, my wife, and some of the other products that you'll see through there. She does most of the design uh, for Patriot Supply. 
And again, that comes from years and years of uh, usage of the trailers and trying to make it more efficient. So those storage boxes that you see there, four of them come in a pack. They're all canvas with the uh, zipper on them for $260. You can vis uh, visit patriotsupply.com.au uh, um, and you can order them online or you can order them singly. But what they were actually designed for, so you see those little name tags in the front there. That's it, we've got a shot of that up on the screen now. So those little name tags, what they were designed for when we go on a trip, Christian, Ashton, Mia, myself and Sarah get one of them each. If you can't fit it inside that box, you do not take it. I cannot count the amount of trips that we done in the early days where we just took far too much gear, gear that we didn't need. And we see it here every day through the service department, people rocking up in their camper trailers, you know, overloaded. We had a guy turn up here once with three generators on board a Patriot X1 because he, he wanted to have backup. So look, you gotta be really um, diligent with what you pack on these trips and they are absolute game changers. If you own a camper trailer or a tray back here, you're into touring, that is a product that I will guarantee that if you ended up getting uh, some of them, you wouldn't regret it. But specifically, they're designed there to fit side by side, as you can see on, the, uh, on all of the X range of trailers. Now, Tom, mate, have you got in there the new little essentials kit? Is that, is that in that side there somewhere? I do, and I only found about, out about these today. Mate. Run, give them a quick run through this, because this, this is one that she's pretty proud of. This is brand new, this just came in this week. Yeah, mate, absolutely. Look, I had a bit of a look about this just before we started, and um, look, they're so good. They're refillable, um, and they're color coded as well, but they come in this cool, clear container, so you can see exactly what you're gonna grab. Um, but you've got insect repellent spray, I really need that, being English. Insect uh, bite release spray, I need that even more. After, I need the whole kit. The after sun spray, hand sanitizer, um, which is obviously great for these times, and the SPF 30 sun spray. They're so good, I mean, they'll, and they'll fit up here perfectly, right next to your toiletries. So even you, Tommy, I will guarantee your trailer looks exactly like mine. Your kitchen box is filled up with liters and liters and liters of all that stuff <laughs> that would last you you know, you get your, your aerosol cans, they're like end up being two years old and they're like beaten to death because you've just got more than you need. I've been using that insect repellent uh, over the past couple of weeks. Sarah's been testing this gear now um, for a couple of months. The stuff that comes in it is amazing, but the big point is that you can actually refill all of that and you only take what you need for the trip, it takes up no space. And price on them, $24.95, again available at patriotsupply.com.au. So there you go, Patriot Supply, there's, there's a free uh, plug. I think, Tom, that probably about covers all the storage in the X1M without going into the kitchen. Oh, the front box, you want to quickly um, give us a quick look in there? Yeah, so um, what we'll do, have a look in here. As you can see, um, large shelf and an even bigger storage compartment. You can actually get a utility slide um, to help you with uh, larger things. So you want to slide in and out of there. Uh, and there's your, your shower and that door. But even then, that's such a big space. Um, you almost can't fill one of these trailers with the amount of gear, you know? So that's about it for all of your free storage. I think we've covered all of that. Uh, but keep in mind, guys, and especially if you're considering you're looking at or comparing uh, other models of trailers, do yourself a, a favour when you're looking around a camper trailer, think about where would you put your camp chair? Where would you put your solar panel? Where would you put your toilet? Um, because all of those things have been thought about um, in all the Patriot Campers models and that's why we offer such big bulk storage areas because there is bulky gear that you need to take along with you. So that's about it for the storage. Um, let's get into the real exciting bit. Let's get into the thing that everybody, the first time they walk up to a Patriot Camper, the number one thing that they go to, and that's got to be the kitchen. Now the kitchen uh, section of the X1 is probably the thing that I think the team at Patriot Campers are the most proud of. And I would have to say it is the one area of the camper trailer that has not changed since day one. Slight modifications, bigger sink and movement of shelves. Uh, but fundamentally from day one, we got it right. We put a lot of, a lot of work into the design in the early days. Um, we were, you know, we were working with bench tops and we were playing with cardboard shelves and where's everything going to work and where am I going to put this and if I'm cooking. Um, and, th and that's where the, the ergonomics of the X1 kitchen comes from. Uh, Tommy, we might do a quick setup after you run through the kitchen. Let's do a quick setup of the awning. Um, but let's run through that kitchen first, mate. Okay, sounds good. It's, uh, you're definitely right there, Justin. It is 
the best part of the camper trailer. I mean, for cooking that, you know, lunch is on the go, breakfast. Um, as a tradie trailer, you know, you can load up the, the, um, the fridge with everything you're going to need for that week, so you don't have to make sandwiches in the morning, save a bit of time, um, getting ready for work. So, you know, the whole thing just is going to cover everything. So we're going to open up the door. Um, that's held with a bungee cord. That stops the wind from blowing that door shut. And we're just going to slide out the fridge first. <clears throat> now we're using a 50 litre Waco um, from Dometic um, at the moment. Slide out that last sink. Um, this area, I mean, it's, it's been so well thought out. You've got plate storage here, so you can put a number of plates for the whole family. Um, wet sponge storage area here, now you can put a little uh, washing wand in there, some dishwasher liquid, um, it's right next to your sink. And then obviously you've got the cutlery drawer. Um, there you go, bit of cutlery in there already. Um, and it's so easy, just lay it back in there, um, shut it up, close this down, and you can be on the road um, once again. We'll talk about the sink though. Now there's one thing that we, we can put on, <clears throat> and now this is your, your kitchen leg. So for a quick lunchtime stop, it's not needed. But if you're pulling up to camp for long periods of time, you're just going to get your, your leg in here, and we're just going to lift that up. That's just going to take a bit of the strain, you know, especially if you're, you're with friends and they sort of tend to want to lean on things. Uh, it's just going to help these runners. But the sink, it's, you know, it's a lot bigger than the older models. You can get full-size plates in there. And the best thing is you've got hot tap and a cold tap. So you can plumb your hot into your gas hot water system and have hot water to wash up in. Um, and then these are, these are plumbed directly to your water tank. So there's 155 litres of water and they're stored underneath the trailer. Um, and then we give you a, a black drainage hose um, so you can run your water away from the kitchen sink. It's not going to be all through your, through your kitchen area. <coughs> if we open up this door here, that involves the kitchen. Now, I think everyone loves the bench top. You know, it's a Rymex stainless steel bench top. Um, so you can use it as a chopping board, all that sort of stuff, and it's easy to clean um, and, you know, very, very hygienic. Up here, um, Tommy, you've got, you got more... Me there, mate? Yeah, Justin, got you. I might, might just jump. Can we actually... I can't see from here. Can we pan that camera around? Is that the new Dometic or not? It's not the new Dometic. No, That's the, the old league. Dometic. <clears throat> okay, next week, we've got to present... Um, we've got to show everybody the new Dometic. The yep. new CFX 55. I think that's a great idea, mate. We'll, right, we'll, we'll organise we'll, it. We'll pick that up next week. Okay. All right, keep good. going, mate. So under here, you can do a, a range of different storage, but I'll talk about what's really relevant to the kitchen. Um, you've got these large drawers up the top. Now, they're great for sort of your mugs, cups, uh, wine tumblers, and things like that. And they've all got locks on them. And the reason being is so that if you're on an angle and you open up the side, everything doesn't come shooting out at you. Um, you've got... All the locks on there, they come out. And there's a light inside this um, drawer here so you can see exactly what you've got in. But typically, um, salts, peppers, teas, coffees, oils, um, you know, snacks, that sort of stuff will go in this drawer. Open this one up and this is where your long barbecuing tongs, your spatulas, your sharp knives to keep away from the children uh, and the, the nice long um, cutting ones. Uh, really, really handy, and tinfoil, obviously, and glad wrap, that sort of stuff goes in there. And Sarah's favourite, she always goes on about this, the little spice rack uh, in the corner. It's so good, so handy, especially when you're cooking, um, just to grab that and, uh, and make everything taste a little bit better. Obviously, cooking-wise, you've got, you know, a standard, your two-burner stove on, on one of these, and it's as easy as just removing the gas bottle uh, from the gas bottle um, holder, Hanging it on here, on your little hook, and plugging it in. Um, it also comes with a grill plate, um, so you can do toast or cheese on toast and stuff um, when you're cooking. So it's got so many different uses. One of the best things, though, is it's totally removable. Um, so if you did want to put it somewhere else um, to give yourself more bench space, you, you absolutely can. Um, and then all it does is just slide straight back in. Underneath there, great place for chopping boards as well, so you can slide them just in that area. Everyone's probably going, oh, where do I put all my dry food, um, all that sort of stuff. Well, if we come around the back, this is where you're going to do that. So at the moment, obviously, um, we've got sort of pegs and guy ropes, but typically, this is where you're going to do, um, you know, all your dry food, just uh, your kids' uh, chips, you know, soup, um, soups, tea, um, tin tuna, all that sort of stuff that you're going to take with you and um, that you don't need in the fridge. 
um, but they're totally um, adjustable as to how you want to store your food. So eggs and bread, you can just slide them straight into a nice secure compartment. We'll come back around here because obviously we've missed one, one of the, the best features, and I know Justin's very proud of it, is the barbecue. Um, like I said before, it's so easy to use. Um, all you do is plug it into your gas bottle, or remove the gas bottle, plug it in down there, um, start it up, and away you go. Uh, easy to clean as well, really, really easy to clean because they're totally removable. Um, so you can take it into your house, give it a good clean up, and then ready for your next camping trip. What I also like about this is that if you, I don't know if anyone's seen the Fraser Island video, um, you get to somewhere where you actually can't cook anywhere um, and you have to go to a certain enclosure, you can take all this stuff with you um, and still present a really good meal for the whole family. Um, I suppose, mate, I suppose there's probably a couple of things that's, um, a, that's a pretty good um, walk around to the kitchen. Um, gas bottle, and I am, guys, look, we, are, we will be answering all the questions that are coming through live at the end of this video, but I am monitoring what's coming through in front of me. Um, gas bottle or propane storage, Tom, can we just get a camera in there? Can we show where the actual gas bottle storage is? Yep. So on, that, on the X1N, you get one gas bottle holder as standard. It'll hold a four and a half kilo uh, from memory, but you can also option on a second one. So you can hold one on either side of those wings there at the front. But Tom, probably the big one, mate, if you want to head around to the control panel, let's have a quick look at the airbag system. Because the other fundamental, one of, one of the best uh, parts of the, well, look, I'm going to say the best part of the airbags is, as, as far as, uh, aside from that adjustable spring rate, is the ability to level the camper trailer when you're at camp. So let's have a quick demonstration on that while you're there, Tom. Okay. Yep, no problem, Justin. Just sort of sorting my stuff out. So, um, obviously, You've got your airbag system here, and if you know if we're on angle, if you're on the beach, um, where typically there is a gradient, you can sort of raise or lower each side as you need to. Let's get that camera nice and wide, mate. Yep. So you can see roughly there, you've got about 70 millimetres of travel on either side um, of, the, of the trailer, which is ample for really any situation. You can pull up on, on really off camber surfaces um, and you can level the trailer obviously side to side with the airbags. You can lower one side and pump up the other to get that maximum height. But then obviously on your draw bar, use your draw bar to level it the other way. There's a little uh, spirit level at the front of the trailer, but that's a really handy feature there. Tom, what I might do is, mate, can we, let's start setting up that awning. I could do that. Are you going to time me this time? No, I'm not going to, we've already proved that in the Fraser Island video, mate. <laughs> I'm, I'm remaining king. The best way to win is not compete, right? <laughs> is that the saying? No, no don't, look, don't tell me. a few years ago that. now. I reckon I can be, still beat you. But anyway, we'll set up the awning. Um, okay, so let's, look, I'll let Tommy just run through that awning. Let's, um... Let's get that camera just going back and forth between uh, him and myself. Look, I'll, t I'll talk about the awning. Now, a lot of people are asking the question around the new Hexacore awning. Hexacore, uh, the Pecor awning, is only available currently on the X3. Uh, we may have future plans to add it into the other models. At this point in time, we're not 100% sure. Now, the current awning that we're using um, is Australian canvas. Um, so it's ripstop canvas. Two and a half minute setup, roughly. If um, you saw the Fraser Island video, I may or may not have done it a little bit quicker than that. Yeah, I don't know if Tommy can actually hear that, if you've got the audio there. <laughs> but you've got huge coverage. You've got 270 degrees of coverage all the way around the trailer. Um, just running through some points here. All weather conditions, you can put out guy ropes. Um, it's got a peggable base on there with uh, telescopic poles, which I'll run through as well. It really is a one person setup too. So as you can see on screen here, let's stay on Tommy there. Um, it's a one-person setup. When you get two people involved in setting up or packing down an awning, it gets really, really clunky. So you're better off doing it on your own. You can see how easy uh, Tommy's doing it there. The gas lifts, if we can uh, get a camera onto those gas lifts there, the gas-assisted lifts, that's a patent and item that we developed. You might remember in the early days, we used to have a telescopic post that went up and down that used to jam up with mud and sand and, and all the rest of it, and you really did need two people to lift it. Now it's a very, very simple uh, operation. Um, there's an LED light strip, which uh, Tommy will get on when he's done. 
Um, there it is, you can see it on screen now that's integrated uh, into the awning, but you still have to physically plug that in. Um, it's not hardwired. Uh, and probably, let's point that camera down, have a look underneath. Another Patriot Supply plug about to come up. <laughs> Patriot Supply floor mats. Let's, um, let's have a look at that star, look at that logo on them. So they're also now available from Patriot Supply. I think we're selling them in a twin pack now and a single pack, so they'll, they're sweepable and all the rest of it. But look, Tommy's done. Tom, like, I didn't actually time that. Did you put a timer on that? No, I didn't put a timer on it. I reckon that was under two minutes. I reckon we could watch that back. Let's have a quick uh, walk around that awning. Just show everybody the coverage under that, mate. Yeah, so, I mean, look, this, this material is fantastic and it's so good, you know, for those hot days. It really blocks the sun out. Um, you've got Velcro strips here. Now, they're really good for, you can buy um, windbreak balls. So you can put them up pretty much wherever you like to stop any of that wind, rain, or even the afternoon sun coming into your, your camp. The best thing is, though, you've got adjustable poles. Now, we obviously get the question all the time, you know, what happens with the water runoff? Well, look, typically, if it's raining, you generally drop a pole, uh, every other pole, and it gives you nice water runoff as well. Now, these feet also have two sort of holes in there, so you can um, put a peg through there. And that's going to give it really good stability in wind um, as well. But they're so easy. You saw how easy it was to um, put up. They've been designed so that if you do, in the event, you know, the, the awning decides to take off with the wind, it's designed to break here <coughs> at the hinges, okay? Um, so that way you're not bending any poles. These are easily replaced. Uh, I think they're about $19.95 um, through Patriot Supply to, to replace those. I'm really easy. Anyone, anyone can do it. Um, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a great product, eh? It really is. It's tried and tested. We've used it for a long time. That's probably about enough on the awning. Look, I need a drink. My throat's starting to hurt. I think we're going to... Look, let's take a quick 60-second break and throw in a message from our sponsors. To celebrate Season 3 of Patriot Games, we're giving you the chance to win the ultimate family touring package worth over $150,000. Enter now to get your hands on a brand new Isuzu D-Max kitted out to handle a Patriot Games adventure using the gear we know and trust. And if that's not enough, you'll also receive a Patriot Campus X2 to tow behind it. Plus, receive a brand new Polaris Ranger for the kids and loads of camping gear. Entries close June 30, 2020. Enter online now at patriotgames.tv. All right, I've got to admit, this is, um, this is harder work than I, than I actually anticipated. So, um, Patriot Games. So, if you've been following, if you want to see what the use of the, the real life use is of the Patriot Campers products, make sure you subscribe to the Patriot Games YouTube channel. Um, you can see me and my family doing what we do best, pushing these things all around the world. We've been to the ends of the earth. Um, and I'm going to say in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see me do something that I, I swear I would never do uh, with a Patriot camper. Uh, but to find out, you're going to have to subscribe to Patriot Games. So jump over to that YouTube channel. Um, let's get into the biggest point of difference of the X1N compared to the other X range of, uh, of camper trailers. And that's got to be um, the XO rack and the accommodation section of the camper trailer. So as we've mentioned previously, uh, the fundamental difference between the X1N and everything else is it doesn't come with a rooftop tent. But even better than that, we've now designed our own roof rack system which is available on the X3 um, and also on the X1N and it's called the XO rack uh, system. It's a proprietary extrusion that we've developed um, that's very well integrated into all of our products, into the camper trailers. Uh, but what the extrusion does is it, it gives you the ability to fit accessories from any of the other roof rack manufacturers. So if you have current accessories like bike racks or max tracks mounts or in any type of hooks or whatever, shovel mounts, high lift jacks and all the rest of it, that will all bolt straight on uh, to the XO rack system. Now on the X1N you get four crossbars, but you can option on, if you wanted like a full platform, you can option on another four bars. Um, which are a very low cost, you know, in, in the scheme of things. Um, to make that rack a little bit more versatile, you can also move those, those bars back and forward. If we kind of swing around to the front, you'll, you'll notice there's an air diffuser 
uh, on the front of the XO rack system. Um, so that's to direct the air, obviously, around the roof rack. And aesthetically, it just gives it a very, very unique um, look. But it is fully integrated uh, into the X1N. So, uh, Tommy, I'll cross over to you. And you want to run them through the details on, on how you use your XO rack system, I suppose. Yeah, thanks, Justin. Um, look, I love this system. It's so easy to tie things down. And, um, you know, like you said, you can pretty much put anything you like on there. So any, um, you know, roof rack manufacturers accessories. Um, I'm just going to lift this door up so we can get a little bit closer. Um, but you're absolutely right. Being able to put extra bars in there makes it a full platform. So if you are carrying gear bags or, or storage boxes on top instead, uh, it's, it's perfect for that. But look, for me, like I said before, uh, it's a large swag or two large swags up, up the top uh, with the bikes piled on top of that uh, with two straps over the whole thing and, and away you go. And I don't think it gets much easier than that, especially when you're carrying lots of gear. You know, if you are a, uh, a tourism company that, are, you know, tag along tours and you want to take other people's camping gear, um, have a base camp, kitchen, all that sort of stuff, I mean, this is going to do the whole thing. Um, and it's, it's, a really, it's such a great system and it's one of the reasons why I bought the, the X1N. Um, but tent wise, look, you can go pretty much any rooftop tent you like. You've got the iCamp SkyCamp 4, um, the iCamper X cover, uh, James Baroud or one of the Darchi High Views. Uh, I think they do a 1500 or an 1800 as well, depending uh, on what you're, you're going for. Before, uh, Tommy, before we get into that detail there, mate, let me, let me just jump in there for a sec because this will be a common uh, question on that XA rack. Um, measurements 1.4 metres by 2.1 metres. Now, you'll also notice on the X1N, let's go around to the front because this is the point that I think we, we might have possibly missed, but this is a big one. If you have a look at that front, look at that side profile on that front box there. Uh, Tommy, I know you're aware of this. I'm not telling you, I'm telling the viewers. We've redesigned the whole front box on the X1N. Now, fundamentally, what we have designed that for is you can fit on a 2.1 metre James Baroud without having to have it overhang the back of the trailer and still have the ability, that's it, mate, pop it open there, um, and still have the ability um, to open the front box. Now, the other big advantage is uh, we saw a massive uh, popularity gaining for the iCamper Sky Camp 4 and that's become a very, very big seller for here, us here at Patriot Campers. Um, and that will bolt straight onto the top of the X1N and you've still got full ability to open your front and rear box without having to overhang it over the back of the trailer. Now, the low profile system, you can see there how low profile that XO rack is. Um, now, what that means is you can keep that, your tent obviously very, very low uh, to the trailer so you don't have some big contraption on top to lift the tent up uh, over the trailer. Obviously gives you a lot better aerodynamics and keeps everything nice and low. You do not need to add any other bars or accessories to mount any style of roof, uh, rooftop tent onto the XO rack system. Any brand of uh, rooftop tent, um, as long as it comes with its own uh, mounts or bolts, will bolt straight onto the top of that. So. What we might do, have we got um, some photos there handy of the iCamper SkyCamp or the X cover? Do we have any of those that we can actually throw up? No? I'm getting a no back from the control room. Oh, there we go. Perfect. iCamper, uh, there's your SkyCamp 4, so you can see that up on the screen right now. So that's, that's fundamentally a four-person tent. Personally, I, don't, I haven't had a lot of experience with, with one. I've, I've used them on product shoots and demos and all the rest of it iCamper has come leaps and bounds in quality to where they were. We actually brought the first iCamper into Australia back in 2014. Um, we found them out of Korea and we bought one and the quality just wasn't there. The quality of these things now is comparable to anything else that's out on the market. Very good bit of gear and will sleep four people uh, quite comfortably. You'd, you'd want to be very close with those four people that you're sleeping with. Hey, Tom. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, mate. I mean, it's... <laughs> You know, it, it is it is tight, but you know, um, I was saying to you before, you know, the the difference in the tents. I mean, you've also got the the James Baroud there. Um, that I don't. Maybe think... maybe we can throw a photo up of the Baroud if we got one of that. There we go. There's I... the James Baroud. Um, yeah, Tom, go on. What were you going to say? I don't think you get much quicker than that. I mean, I know you've had personal um, use of that trailer uh, with with the James Baroud. And how do you find? How I mean, you haven't used the iCam, but I mean, your opinion on the James Baroud. 
Look, I'm, I'm a really big fan of if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, the first X1 that we ever designed was designed for a James Baroud. And we built the first X1 with a James Baroud on it. Now, I've been running James Baroud's for as long as I can possibly remember. I am a massive fan of James Baroud. I'm a massive fan of the quality, the materials that they use. Um, the hexacore material that we just developed, um, a lot of the um, inspiration came from the James Baroud material because there was nothing else on the market like it. So I'm pretty impartial to James Baroud, but the space of that eye camper, of that Sky Camp 4, um, and now the build quality that's behind them, I've got to say, it's, it's a pretty good bit of gear. The other good eye, eye camper one is the X cover. Do we have one, uh, an X cover? I love so this there's one. the X cover. Now you've used the X cover, haven't you, Tom? I love this. I love this tent. I, I, I think you know, if I was to move away from the swags on mine, this would be the one I'd go for. Yep. Um, Why? Well, Why? I mean, the be best thing is, is the the cover um, is actually the base of the tent. Oh, sorry, the base of the tent of your bed is the cover. So there's no pulling a cover over the top. It's literally one zip, um, and away you go. Um, so I pull it out and it's, there's so much space, there's so many windows, so, it's so airy. Plus you can get all those window covers so if it's raining um, you can be nice and dry in there and still have ventilation. But what I love about it is the little rack system on the top. So I'm not losing that ability to put a kayak or the kids bikes and things like that on the top. Um, and, and I suppose, look, for me that's the key with that, with that, uh, that particular tent is still having the roof bars. Guys, jump on and have a look at the Desert Ops X1N uh, launch video on YouTube after this one. Don't do it right now, stay with us. Um, <laughs> jump on there and have a look at that one and you'll see the versatility of that. Uh, probably the last one that we offer would be the Darchi. I'm hoping we got an image of the Darchi up there. There we go, there's the Darchi. What's that one called, Tommy? Uh, that's the High View. I think that's the 1800. High View 1800. Now that's your, your very typical soft bag top um, rooftop tent. Very, very, very economical, very affordable um, and great quality as always from Darchi and most of the Darchi products um, that we use and you'll see Darchi products right throughout Patriot Games and, and Patriot Campers videos. So look, I'm, I'm going to wrap that up on the, the tents there. We've still got another couple of sections to get to. We're, we're coming to the end. Um, do I look like a news reporter when I do that? We're coming right to the end. Um, let's have a talk about the services. Let's talk about electrical and water. Now, when it comes to power off the grid, I'll be, I'll be the first one to put my hands up and say, when I started developing the camper trailer, really, the one thing that, came, that, that I came unstuck on um, was when it came to electrical, when it came to wiring. I, I just had absolutely no idea. I went down to a local electrical service uh, supplier and I said, look, I'm building a camper trailer. I need this, I need DC charge, I need AC charge, I need solar charge, I need switches and all the rest of it. And he brought all this gear out and piled it out on this table in front of me and my brain just exploded. I couldn't deal with it. And he said, look, if you want to spend the money, we have this thing. It's called a, a Red Arc. And I'm like, a, a what? And I'd never really heard of, of Red Arc prior to that. Now, the BMS 1230, the Manager 30 that we've been running in the camper trailers from day dot is proven, tried and tested. And I know like every other industry, there's so many competitors that come on board or, or people that, that want to get involved in those industry or, or see an opportunity. Um, but you can't, you, you cannot... Uh, look away from the engineering and the Australian manufacturing that Red Arc provides. And that's why they're one of our most critical suppliers. And by critical, I mean we have an alliance with Red Arc, um, like not many other companies that we deal with. We have three or four um, that really work with us when it comes to R&D to help push our products into the next um, dimension. And this is, this is where, it, um, this is where our, our relationship kind of works with Red Arc. Now, with the Manager 30, the simplicity of the system is the biggest thing that comes to mind. Look, what I want to know when I'm camping, how much power do I have and how much time do I have left using that power? That's it. Amps and volts and milliamps and cycles and I don't care. Don't want to know about it. I just want to know how much battery I've got left. And Tommy will run you through right now um, why the BMS does this so well and why we put the BMS in the standard fitting in the X1N. Over to you, Tom. Thanks, Justin. Um, but it, you, mate, you explain everything so well, it's hard to keep up. But what I want to show you through um, on this is just, like you said, the simplicity. You know, one click, bang, we can see exactly how much um, battery we've got, how many days we've got till we're flat, 
We can also then go down and see where our charge is coming from. Now, on a Patriot Camper X1N, you've got um, three sources of charging. You've got charging off your tow vehicle while you're driving. You've got 240 input, okay, and that's located just under here in front of the wheel arch. If you might have to spring the camera just into that area, a um, bit of light in there. Um, Can I jump in there, mate? Yeah. Uh, 110 volt, obviously available now um, for the United States. So we have fully engineered, compliant 110 volt systems. If you do buy a Patriot camper in the United States, this is, system is now all 110 volts. So no converters, no transformers. Thanks, Justin. Um, yep, so you've got the 240 input. And then round the other side, we, let's go and do that um, now. We'll show you where that's located. Obviously, a lot of people do ask the question. And that is located here, just above the wheel arch. Um, now, to be noted, if you are using a solar uh, blanket or panel, um, you need to remove the regulator before plugging in because the BMS does all the regulating for you. So you actually don't have to touch anything. You just plug in and it says, okay, right, I've got this power in now and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start charging. Um, so in that screen there, you can see where your charge is coming from and how many volts you're getting in. Um, this also tells you a little bit more um, in depth about where, the char where your power is being used. Um, and then this here tells you where your, um, what sort of mode you're in and everything else like that. So you can actually change these into, at the moment we're in touring mode, you can change it into storage mode um, that's basically an isolator switch for your batteries to stop any, um, any drain when you're not using it. Tommy, mate, let's, um, let's have a look at all the, um, have a quick look at the switching in the LEDs and maybe just jump around the other side and have a quick look at the inverter that's fitted um, into the trailer as well, mate. Yeah, no problem, mate. Hang on. We'll do the inverter first and then we'll come back around to do the switches. So I open up here. Um, on this side, 350 watt inverter is standard on an X1N. Um, so you can plug in things. Look, I use um, you know, uh, electric chainsaw, electric drills um, and things like that. So for me, really handy for charging those batteries up. Um, but also for charging, you know, my son takes a remote controlled car, all those sort of things. Um, Really, really handy piece of kit. It's got a little charging shelf up the top, like I said before, but um, you know it's, it keeps all the electrical up and high. The other thing, and we're going to go around this way. Before you take off, mate, before you take off, let's kill two birds with one stone there. Um, let's talk about the hot water system, mate. You're right beside it. Thanks, Justin. I'm always uh, keeping on my toes. Um, Smart Tech gas hot water system, again, standard on a Patriot Campers X1N and they're so easy to use. Um, you grab your shower, if you connect to the gas, connect to the water, which you've got a tap on the drawbar, um, which is directly connected to your um, water tanks with a, um, a water pump, and then you've got your hot water output. So what you can do um, is either plug in the sink um, hot water um, feed, or you can plug in your shower tent. Now, a lot of people go, oh, where do I put my shower? So look, we recommend a, a pop-up shower tent, and typically you'd run one about here. So you're nice and far away from your camper trailer, you're not gonna get heaps of water through your campsite when you're showering. So you've got a long enough hose, it's got a five meter hose on it, um, and um, yeah, you, you'll run that straight into your shower. Um, but here's the tap, nice and easy. So again, you can use that when you're, dis when you're finished hitching up, you can just wash your hands, and get back in the car um, or fill up buckets or even use a hose that we supply to hose the camper down especially if you've done a really muddy trip and you want to get into the side compartments it's easy just to hold ho hose down um, the doors and that way stops uh, all the stuff falling in when you when you open them up mate um, i might just jump back in there uh, we might start winding this down because we're getting right on uh, close to the time i'll just hit a couple of points there just to i know you'd get to it yeah, I know, I know you get to it. I can see you smiling there. Um, look, so a couple of things there. Um, electrical system in all of the Patriot campers now, I would have to say, is world-class, state-of-the-art OE stuff. Uh, fully supported, lots of drawings, lots of uh, technical advice, um, and very, very um, repetitive. That's all buried nice and low, into the, the, right into the bowels of the trailer, I suppose. On a Patriot camper, you won't see any connections, you won't see any loose wires, you won't see any, you know, any cords or anything coming out of anywhere. Um, it's all out of the places where it should be, like, like any um, well-built piece of equipment. Um, the hot water system can obviously run to the sink as well. I think, Tommy, you touched on that. 
There is a lockable uh, water filler cap um, that's uh, with the trailer as well. We also can offer a pressurized water filler cap. So instead of just drip feeding from your hose, um, you can plug straight into a, a, a garden hose and fill that at, um, at high pressure. So that probably about rounds it up. Um, the whole shower tent thing, I think if you have to use a shower tent, you're not using your Patriot camper for what you bought it for. You shouldn't be around anywhere that you have to use a shower tent. <laughs> Tommy and I have had this conversation multiple, multiple times. You want to be out there remote, no need for it. That's the reason why we don't have an integrated shower. Um, I think that really wraps up the walk around the trailer. What we're going to do now is we are going to get into the q and I'm going to scroll back through all of these YouTube comments. Um, let's give Tommy a minute to get out of the showroom. Big round of applause for Tom. That was absolutely amazing. I know if, <laughs> if there was a crowd out there, the whole camera crew. Tommy, mate, you smashed it. Um, mate, get back, uh, get back in here and let's get into the q and I'm coming, mate. Hello. Hello, mate. All right. That was good. Well done. Oh. How'd you go? Oh, it was good. Feel I'm, good? I'm, no sweat? No, no sweat. I mean, there's obviously, there's so many features uh, on these things, it's, you, you kind of get lost. It's a lot to get through in an hour. It is a lot to get through in an hour. And I suppose, look, this is, this is really what we're doing here with the, the virtual uh, tours and, and the COVID, uh, what's going on uh, around the world at the moment is, you know, we're trying to give people a little bit more of an in-depth mm. look mm. outside of the glitz and glamour of the product videos, yeah. you know? We put a lot of work into all of our product videos. We are very, very proud as a brand um, of our product videos. And we think the quality that we deliver through our product videos is 100% representative of the products that we produce. But there's nothing like really in getting, getting in front of one, talking to someone who owns one, talking to someone who's been there from you know almost the start of the brand. Well, not almost, he was there at the start of the brand. The concept of the Patriot, when that came up, we were young tackers running around <laughs> Hunting out west, and oh, you know, they were the days. They were the days. <laughs> Didn't have to go to work, no kids to deal with, none of that sort of stuff. So that's where it all kind of comes from. Um, I'll, I'll just um, look. I might get to the, the, the final points later. Let's scroll through these questions, yeah, okay. and we'll try and pick up what we can. Now I'm going to say right now we've got Ryan from Off Grid uh, Outfitters, our New South Wales distributor, is online right now, and he has been the whole right. time. Graham from Camping Adventures, who's our Victorian distributor, has been on here the whole time. So they've answered the majority of the questions. But let's try and pick the eyes out of, um, out of the ones that we, um, that we think are really relevant. Do you send to New Zealand? We certainly do. And we must have probably seven camper trailers over there now. And, and it's so easy. And look, price-wise to freight, it's actually not that, um, that expensive at all. I mean, you, you think about we've got to freight them to WA, New Zealand's just across the river, you know? Um, so guys, anyone in New Zealand, um, give us a call. I do have customers over there um, that are more than willing to show you the product uh, if you want to see one. Um, but just give us a call and we'll have a chat. Um, but yeah, New Zealand, 100% and um, get on board. Will we be at the Four Wheel Drive and Adventure Show in Sydney? Great question. If it's on. If it's on, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, check out the website for, for updates on the shows. Let's, let's attack a white elephant here. Uh, are you bringing Patriot campers to the UK soon? Now, I'll answer this and I'll try and answer this really quick because we are getting a lot of inquiry from Europe oh, at huge, the moment. And huge. especially off the back of the launch of the X-Ray, which is probably a more suited product. Guys, the compliance regulations in the EU are ridiculous. Like, and I'm gonna go out there and say that they are absolutely absurd. There is no provision in the EU for an electrical brake controller. So what they wanted us to do, as uh, our, our followers would know, we launched in Germany a couple of years back. Uh, we've done a lot of work with the TUV over in Germany, getting compliance on the trailer. We did get compliance on the trailer. We had to use a mechanical override braking system, which was this Alco hitch, which was about 400 millimetres deep reserved for caravans, sat 50 millimetres off the ground. This type, type of camper trailer and the intent of use for this camper trailer, mechanical brakes are just not an option for us. And it really bastardizes, for lack of a better word, our trailers. So we pulled out of the EU. Now we know some of our suppliers are doing some work over there. We know Cruise Master are doing some work over there trying to get compliance. Uh, I think Red I think Red Arc's done a little bit of work over there when it comes to compliance. But until they pass electronic brake controllers available in the, in the EU, uh, we will not be representing the brand in the EU. But 
We have sent a lot of trailers okay. over there to the EU. As a personal import, I'm not going to comment on how you do it, and it's nothing untoward or illegal, but as a personal import, as a one-off, yes, you can get them registered, but I can't give you advice yeah. on exactly how you do that. So to answer that question, we are not selling in the EU, but we will send a trailer from Patriot Campers HQ X Works to anywhere in the world, yeah? We are 100% compliant in the United States though, uh, though, and obviously in Australia, okay? Yep. Answers that? Yeah, that's good. Cool, that's fair. Um, what else have we got here? I'm just trying to find the really, uh, and I'm not saying, look, all of these are relevant guys, but I'm trying to pick out the questions that I think are, are, are being repetitive. Um, what else have we got? Does the awning for the X1N come with drop-down sides to seal the trailer in bad weather? If not, we should have put them up. Run, run them up. through that, mate. Okay, so when you can see your awning, um, now with a lot of the other mo models, we've designed a tent to integrate with the awning. Obviously, with so many different styles of tents, you can go for this. Uh, with this awning, there's infill panels. Um, and what they do, they sort of slide in and Velcro in underneath uh, the main trailer. We might just get a video shot there. Um, and basically, there we go. got it up here, mate. What that's going to do is stop any rain coming between into your kitchen, uh, between your tent and the kitchen, basically. Um, so yes, there is a provision for that, and they're really, really handy. So um, yeah, you almost yeah, put them up when when the rain starts to come. We did have them there. Um, another couple of questions that have come up about uh, wheels and tyres. Can I supply my own wheels and tyres? Can you match offset? Uh, answer is no, guys. In the early days, look, we did do it. Um, we are a manufacturing company. We work on a tack time on a production line. Um, we don't have the advantage anymore of, of being able to accommodate people who want to supply their own wheels and tyres. Patriot campers will only be supplied with the PCOR wheels and the tyres that come with them standard. What you do with them after is up to you. Put them on Gumtree, put them on Craigslist or whatever, sell them and put on your own wheels and tyres. And unfortunately, for the same reason, we can't actually match offset, mm. yeah? Um, when it comes to um, our standard offset, it's a POS 10, so you could go, you know, on your wheels, you could go to a neg 10, zero, POS 10 would be fine. If you're in the United States, you can really do whatever you want because you can hang tyres outside the guards. You can't do that here in Australia. And yes, 35 inch tyres will fit on any Patriot camper, but in Australia, the brakes are only rated to a 33 inch tyre. So if you do want to go to a 35, you've got to upgrade to a 12 inch brake. That's it, yeah. Yep, which is possible, can be done, yeah. Uh, so I hope that answers that question. Um, <laughs> this is not one for the general public. Uh, wheels and tyres, guys, look, I, I think we'll wrap up on the questions there, uh, being that there's, look, there is so many of them there. Contact any one of your dealers if you've got any more specific uh, questions. Send us an email, jump on social media, Instagram, Facebook. We do our very best to reply to social media messages, as you can imagine, we get a lot of them. If you genuinely want a question answered or you've got an inquiry, your best bet is to contact the dealer. So let's talk about the dealers. Dealers in Australia, Tom. Okay, so look, we I mean, look, we're really um, quite privileged to have uh, a dealer uh, in every major city, pretty much. Big network, um, yeah. Massive network, so great service network. Um, so we've got uh, Off Grid Outfitters in New South Wales. We've got Camping Adventures uh, in Victoria. We've got TJM Nailsworth, South Australia. Um, and at the moment, we've got Camping um, Caravan Camping uh, Mega Store. Uh, over in Perth, in WA. So and guys, obviously Patriot Campers HQ here on the Gold Coast in Queensland. That's it. And the big shout out goes to um, our brothers overseas, uh, the boys from Exploration Outfitters in Mead, Oklahoma. They're the Patriot Campers, the only Patriot Campers distributor currently in the United States. Um, they are distributing right across the United States. A great bunch of guys. They have all the inventory there in stock. They're generally carrying at least one of every model, but they have everything there on display. They've just built a brand new showroom up there. Yeah. Um, so if you want to get out there and check those guys out, we're at Overland Expo East and West every year. Uh, we're at SEMA every year. And then check the EXO uh, website, the EO website, uh, sorry, um, for any of the other shows that they might be doing. And the other one is Patriot Campers now in Mongolia. Uh, Tamir and the crew over in Mongolia, um, if you're following Patriot Games, you'll see our current uh, trip and our launch into Mongolia. I'm not going to go into it in detail, but everybody get asked, gets asked the big why. Why Mongolia? Well, 
to, on one side you've got Russia, on the other side you've got China, two massive up and coming overlanding communities. Um, and that was the reason for our launch over there. Let's recap on the pricing on the X1N. Yep, uh, so $39,990, uh, starting price here in, um, here in Australia. And the one you saw there with the fridge, the barbecue things, you're sort of looking around that sort of 43, 44,000. Yep. Um, and then in the US, it's $30,990. $30,990 in the United States, as you see it with the 110 volt system. Uh, in both countries, you get a five year warranty on the Patriot Campus X1N. Uh, structural warranty, same as all of the other uh, Patriot Campus gear. That shows the faith that we have in the product. And all of that information is available in our product video. So there isn't a specific product video on the X1N yet. Uh, we have the Desert Ops, but if you watch the- We did the walk around video. We did do the walk around video, so you can watch a couple of those, but I think this is probably about the most informative video that we have at the moment. Do not forget um, the instant write-off scheme if you're in Australia right now, available from the federal government. If you are a tradie, you're looking to get into a camper trailer or a super tourer, any of our uh, models, specifically the X1N, the toy haulers and the, and the uh, super tourers, take advantage of that right now. Um, it's a great incentive. Watch the product videos. I think we're going to wrap it up there and mate. Let's wrap it up. Great, great job. <laughs> I hope everybody uh, likes it. Don't forget to contact the dealers. Thank you very much for tuning in. Next Wednesday, we will be back with the next Patriot Campus product in our virtual show. See you later. <laughs>